What's up you guys, FSC Truck Shop. It didn't fail while I was on the road when I was filming, but it did fail right before I went away on vacation, so now I have to repair a few things. Orwell has been losing prime in the fuel system. Literally as I pulled away, Orwell stumbled and died. A quick bunch of pumps on the primer handle and all of a sudden she fired right up, ran all the way down to the yard, no trouble. Left the yard again, lost the prime. Quick pumps in a handle, got her all the way home. Put them inside, went on vacation, came back, same thing. Have to prime the handle, backed it out, cleaned up the shop, got everything moved around. Once again, we're gonna go ahead and fire it up. I don't know if it's gonna hold prime or not. It's only sat here for one day as opposed to two weeks. So either way, we're gonna go ahead and see. I don't know if the transfer pump is bad or if I poke the line in the fuel line somewhere. So we're gonna go ahead and pull it inside and check it out. Let's see what it does.
fun. Not really, but it's what it is. It's weird you get, that's the problem with this place, is that's why we're moving to a better shop, is you get one wheel, you get, basically you twist the axle so you get one each side off the ground and the truck gets stuck, typical. Oh, whatever it is, what it is. All right, let's get and start pumping the jack up. Damn, Matt's not here, I guess I gotta do it. Now bear in mind, I do have a service manual for this truck engine, so real simple, fuel transfer pump. Removal and installation is really simple. It gets complicated on the internals. We're not messing with the internals, they did that. Real simple, remove fuel line from fuel transfer pump. Put caps on the fuel line openings to prevent fuel system contamination. Remove bolts two and remove fuel transfer pump. Three, check the condition of the O-ring seal on the fuel transfer pump. If necessary, make a replacement. Yeah, duh. Install the exact same thing, three steps. Real simple. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna crawl in and eat the truck. It's real simple the way the system works. This line comes from the fuel tank in through the filter and down. This taped off here is where I had deleted the fuel pressure gauge. So this line goes down and comes back up. Sorry, this comes up from the tank through the filter and then this line goes down to the transfer pump which is located underneath the injector pump. Then from there it comes up, pressurizes this here and then this goes into the injector pump and then what the injector pump doesn't send into the injectors comes down through the return on the tank. It's very simple. However, we're losing prime somewhere. I'm also going to be replacing this piece here, this is the primer pump. That could be leaking as well. Also could be a leak in the gasket. So I don't see any, well, maybe I do a little bit. That's just standing from oil. I mean, it could be fuel, but most likely not. Either way, this is the original pump, so I don't really trust it anyway. I mean, as far as I know, this is the 1984 pump in it. But now what I'm gonna do is crawl underneath the truck and see if I could find any uh, pinholes or any damage in this original Peterbilt hotline. Bear in mind, this line here, we've discussed in the past, there's a heating element for when it's cold out, it'll heat the fuel. Now, if there's a pinhole, you would think from sitting or running, there'd be leaking fuel out somewhere. So we're gonna crawl underneath and take a peek. <sighs> These are obviously the lines coming from the fuel tanks and there's valves to close it off. Then it goes up. I forgot it goes up and over. I see no wetness on that line anywhere. I see no wetness at all. No, that is certainly not the problem. Okay, good. Now I know it's just a damn pump. We got it all down my shirt. Yay. Okay, so the fuel supply hose has been removed. So now we take the fuel outlet off. That goes to the engine, of course. Pop it loose. And this one won't drain indefinitely and create a siphon. The other one that does that. Oh yeah, that's great. All right. Better out of the truck than in the truck. 
All right, let's figure out what's your mounting bolts at that pump. How much oil come out too? Now I think about it. Well, that works. Short little guy. I don't know if you guys could see it. It's right here behind the fuel outlet. Right here. I got my tool in there. It looks like it goes straight through the body into the injector pump. Can't imagine this pump is held up by only two. Let's see how, oh yeah, that's it, for sure. It's moving. So let me see if I can snake a hand in there. Hold it up. Oh, you little prick. There you go. I'm gonna learn how to change oil in your injector pump. That's one way to drain it. When I was getting oil in my eyes, closed my eyes and it fell out. Now the light went out. And I bet the GoPro got oil on it. The pump's laying underneath the truck. And wouldn't you know, in the process of cleaning the shop, I buried my vice. Cause you know, I knew I needed it, right? how big your shop is you're always gonna run out of room There we go. There's an O-ring in there, right there, the O-ring, it could have been some of the issue right there. See, tighten this down and then clamp this, it squishes the O-ring. Okay, didn't know that. Now I do. Okay, so now the pump is ready to go to Caterpillar. Ooh, a little magnetized on there. Now, if you haven't heard, we've had this hose right here hissing. You know, with a truck this old, it seems like you have to replace basically every hose on the rig, which is okay. Let's help I get the right one. But you can't get them all. And as you work, they start leaking air. This hose goes to my air seat. 
That's gonna hiss air because I take this part. It's had a hole in it somewhere in here. That goes up top up there. I'm gonna reach it. Maybe. blocking your view. So we'll take this hose when I go to Caterpillar to get the pump. We'll take this hose to Cundingers and have them remake it brand new and then reinstall. All right boys and girls so there's the pump. Apparently it works similar to an old Chevy. It just the engine pushes down on this on this part here. I thought it spun it. But no, it just pushes down. Where's the lift? I believe it would push down. You anyway, know, it's very difficult. So that's how it works. Now what I'm gonna do is just take the fittings apart. This caterpillar is not gonna need the fittings for the new one. Probably I'll put this in a vice. 